This is where we chose to have our shower. It's right here on the stairwell. <laughs> and then we've got sneak a snacks in the back. We spent eight months building it and we've been living in it ever since. And now we're actually about to sell it. I'm Erica. Uh, this is Matt. And that's Shanti. I work at Mr. Best. <laughs> Welcome inside. This is our kitchen, which we, well, I love. <laughs> so when we were designing the bus, Matt and I both got to choose a must have and mine was a full kitchen. I didn't want to cook like I was camping. So he designed these floating shelves, which I absolutely love because I have like quick grab for all my spices. Um, all of the oats and noodles and all the stuff that we use pretty much on a daily basis is um, eye level and quick reach. Coming back over here, um, these countertops are amazing. Uh, they are maple and live edge, and we worked really hard for days to get these puppies to look this way. So uh, we absolutely love this. This is tons of open storage pots, um, cups, bowls, any of the big stuff that you generally use in your kitchen, we just kind of shove under there in perfect organized manner. We chose a camp chef stove because it's two burner and there's an oven. We really went back and forth on having an oven or not. And I'm so glad we went with it because we bake or roast daily, I would say. So we're super happy we went with that. Whenever we want to use the stove, we take off this top portion, slide it behind the oven, and then it pops up and we have a stove. And then we just put it back down when we're done using it for more counter space. We get a lot of compliments on our backsplash and it's actually just stick and peel. It was an order off of Amazon and um, it works out perfectly. We went with a hammered copper sink because it's microbial. Anti-microbial. Mi anti it's anti-macrobial. It's anti-macrobial. micro -abrial. <laughs> It is good for not having a lot of bacteria stored in it. That's why we chose it. And it's gorgeous. It matches our, our kitchen perfectly. Um, this is just your typical silverware and um you know plasticware down the bottom and we've got you know baby spoons and forks and whatnot in there under here we have a hot water heater it's two and a half gallons and it supplies us with enough hot water to do tons of dishes give shanti a bath in the sink or either one of us can shower without having to rush it's really nice when we were designing the bus we watched tons of tiny home tour videos and something that i really really liked and made sure was in our kitchen was this vertical pantry uh, doorway. It stores tons of our cans and tea and we even have space. Check that out. <laughs> but it's just a little hideaway that um, really um, allows us to have more space in other places. Because we live in this full time, I wanted um, an apartment sized fridge uh, that was, you know, freezer on top, fridge on bottom. And it is definitely worth every penny we spent and it fits perfectly. Actually, the reason why it fits perfectly is because we pretty much installed this and then built the kitchen around it. <laughs> um, up here we have fruits and veggies. Um, easy grab, although Matt says sometimes they're out of sight, out of mind, so I know they're there. My favorite part of the kitchen is the extension, the pantry. Uh, this is just where we keep our dry goods. The space in here is really deceiving because what you see is not what you get. This thing is almost two, well probably is, two feet deep. Like, I'm just now touching the back here, and then we've got <laughs> sneak of snacks in the back. <laughs> All of the time we get people asking how we did our reclaimed wood floors and it's just one big sheet of vinyl. And it came from Hot Springs, Arkansas, our cousin's own O'Brien Flooring. Go check him out if you're in the area. That concludes my happy place. A lot of people ask us why we chose to live tiny and live on the road full-time traveling. And it really comes down to that we've been traveling, well, especially Erica has been traveling for a long time. Erica traveled internationally for six years, went to over 80 different countries and uh, really lived life. So traveling internationally full-time with nothing but a backpack helped me really grasp the concept of living simply or minimally. You know, everything I needed was on my back and that's all I ever wanted. And um, 
So meeting Matt, I had to give him the warning that I'm not your typical girl that wants the big house and the boat and the fence and all that kind of stuff. I just want adventure. Um, and of course, he was like, yeah, sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was, I was totally down for the adventure. And when we first met, she was living in Barbados. And four months later, I'd sold all my stuff and moved out to the island with her. And we got married out there. And then we conceived Shanti and having our daughter, we were like, okay, we gotta maybe put a pause to traveling. And so we did for a couple months to have her and to first get acclimated to being new parents. But we're like, how can we still travel but give Shanti the consistency of a home? And that's where the idea of a, of a RV, a van, a bus, something came into our hearts. So literally a week later, after deciding we wanted to live life on the road somehow, we were at a friend's house and he was like, hey, you should go talk to Jennifer right over there. I think she had the bus or something. So we were talking to her and she was like, yeah, I have a bus and I've kind of died on the project. I'll sell it to you. And we're like, okay, literally the next day we went to go check it out. And long story short, she ended up giving us the bus for absolutely free. And she had done some stuff to it. And, uh, and everything that she had bought for the bus, she gave it to us. So we were like, holy crap, this is meant to be. Like we, the bus, this bus chose us. Uh, we didn't have to go out and search for it. It was literally handed, handed to us. And we're really grateful for that. So, um, and that started our build journey, getting this thing livable. We spent eight months building it and we've been living in it ever since. So almost two years. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and yeah. Um, and now we're actually about to sell it because we have some really exciting personal news. We're going to be building another bus, but we're going to be selling this one and uh, passing this beautiful Are we going to tell them what the big news is? We can't just leave you hanging. <laughs> Should we? Yeah. Do you guys want to know the big news? I know you can't respond. But... <laughs> Someone's going to find out. <laughs> they have to find out somehow. Well, I'll say it like this. The big news is that we need a little bit more space to... I'm going to have a baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we're expecting another baby. So we're like, instead of tearing this one apart to redesign another crib or whatever, we're just going to sell it and start a new bus. Yeah. New chapter. New yeah. bus. <laughs> so, hey, guys. Welcome to the front of our bus. This is where we chose to have our shower. It's right here on the stairwell and it works out really, really great. So first off, it literally takes up no extra space. It's just in the stairwells, which is wasted space for the most part anyways. So we did Riverstone tile on the steps, and when we go to shower, we hang metal rods and put a shower curtain around it, and all the water just drains right out the steps. And a lot of people are like, well, you're gonna shower on tiled steps? That sounds super dangerous which it could be, but we thought about that and textured the tile. So there's actually a ton of grip, even when they're wet and soapy, and the water just goes right out the stairs. We use responsible soaps, biodegradable, so everything is totally fine for the environment. And speaking of the shower and water usage, we have a 55 gallon freshwater tank and a 45 gallon gray water tank. And then working our way over here, we have these beautiful curtains that our cousins in Oklahoma, So Sweet Quilting Company. They sewed these, they had the fabric, they did everything, they put these dowels inside of it so they fold up really nice and easily. It really was a great addition. So thank you guys, uh, Caleb and Mary, for that. And we redid our dash area with Live Edge, just some scrap Live Edge that we had and turned out great too. And this little drum set here has a cool story. Our friends from Arbor Season gave us this and he's like you know I've had this thing for a long time I've never offered it to anybody but I feel like I feel like I should give it to you and we love it I was like where the heck am I going to put this drum set in our bus but it's it has this perfect little home here and I use it all the time it's a suitcase drum set it is super rad and eclectic looking it's a really cool addition up here so now working our way up here we left the cool little bus mirrors and this little the old bus door handle that's all stock. We wanted to keep these because they're just cool. And also when Erica and Shanti are sitting in the back there and I'm driving, I can just peek up and look at them. And right behind this is where we keep all of our shoes. So this is just a door. We took the original one out, 
made a really nice looking uh, door and put some piano hinges on and we keep our shoes right up here. So it works out great. So this is the little jump seat that we installed for our daughter's car seat. It buckles up really secure. It's bolted to the floor. This thing is not going anywhere. And it's the middle seat of a truck. And so it has storage in here. And also this folds down and has additional storage right in there. We keep our fire starter and stuff inside of that. And it works out great. So welcome to our couch living room. I guess the whole place is a living room because um, we live in all of it. Uh, this couch was really fun to build. It pulls out into a full sleeper, so it's seven foot long by four feet wide when it's pulled out. Otherwise, it's two feet wide and seven feet long. And all of these cushions were handmade from our friend Darcy in Florida. And then we had these additional covers sewn by So Sweet Quilting Company in Oklahoma, our family out there. And uh, this wood has a really cool story and a lot of the wood in our bus. This was all just in a nasty pile of wood in North Carolina. It was like all blacked over and everything. I sanded it and then installed it and it came out beautiful. It's all storage underneath the couch. And on this side of it is our entire electrical system. We have 750 amp hours of AGM batteries, a thousand watts of solar on the roof, a 3,500 watt inverter, which powers everything, including our AC. Something that I don't see a lot in people's electrical cabinets, which really should be in all of them, is called an AFO ball, auto fire off ball. And it's a automatic fire extinguisher. So if there was anything to ever happen inside of here, it would explode and extinguish any, any fire, even an electrical fire. And then my lovely wife, Erica, came up with the great idea to make this a photo wall. So she just printed out a bunch of pictures and used Mod Podge to stick them all up there. And it came out great. We have photos of our wedding going all the way just throughout our lives when we lived in Barbados, traveling internationally and building the bus and lots of fun memories up on this wall. And now moving back here into the kitchen dining area, living sitting space. This is a, a table from Ikea, works out really good. It um, has another leaf on the other side so it can pull out and extend so four people can sit. We have our bookshelf right here which works out great as well. Everything in this bus has been really functional for us uh, after living in it for two years. Honestly, there's not too much we would change and everything that we wanted to change, we did. Like the bedroom in the back, you'll see in a little bit. A little planter here and a lovely art piece from our friends, The Wrong Way Home. Uh, we were actually staying with them in South Florida on the West Coast and they found all these air plants and stapled them to this wood and gave it to us as a gift. Right over here, we have some technical components. This is our diesel heater controller, and the diesel heater comes out right here, and this diesel heater cranks it. We've never been cold in the bus because it works so good. Looking at our ceiling, we just put a, it's just Luon eighth inch plywood. It's the only thing that I could get to bend to the ceiling. It was a super pain in the butt, but it worked out. And we eliminated this emergency hatch. It used to be a skylight. We took it out, we just boxed it off because our solar panels ended up blocking it anyways. Then we have our roof vent. It's a Dometic Fantastic fan or whatever it is, but it works out really good. And then our massive AC unit right back here, which I knock my head on all the time, but um, this thing really cranks. It's the biggest roof mount AC unit you can buy, so. Welcome to our half bath. You saw the shower earlier. Um, it's just a basic compost toilet, DIY. Super easy though. What's not so easy is potty training a toddler in a bus. Uh, and you all should invest in a baby shark toilet seat, if you're trying to do that, by the way. Anyways, we just have a medicine cabinet that holds all of our goods, toilet paper, and I feel like that just sums up this lovely space. <laughs> so this is our entire family's closet. We've got hers, his, and mine. We just left it open, no door needed. We're in and out of here all the time, and it kind of forces us to keep it clean anyways. Just like our pantry, these drawers are deceiving as well. Um, they go really, really deep in there. Ugh and they usually close really, really nicely. <laughs> but they hold everything. Those are all of our pants, pajamas. Um, I would show you Matt's drawer, but I'll spare you on that one. Right next to the closet, we have storage above that is like our beanies and our scarves and hats. These things are always organized-ish, <laughs> but they go back really, really far, hold all the towels we need. And, um, and these, we have two. So we've got one small one and a small one back there. So double storage on both of those.
So as soon as you walk into the bedroom area, we have our emergency hatch. It's not the original one. We wanted something different and that one completely flew off in a windstorm anyway. So this worked out, Amazon purchase and um, very easy to install. Coming back here into our bedroom, we made this the most functional spot of our whole entire bus. So much function fits back here. I'm really excited about it. We ended up building a platform bed and having a hers and his desk on each side that we can both sit at and work at at the same time. We have our bed, a ladder to get up into the bed, and uh, Shanti's room down there, which she's actually taking a nap right now, so, which worked out so we could film this with no interruptions. At first, we had a Murphy bed that folded down on this side and I had my desk over here and Shanti had a cubby, but I couldn't work at my desk when the bed was down and I would normally work at night because the girls would be sleeping and yada yada. So when we first moved into the bus, Shanti was only eight months old, so she was tiny, tiny. So we built this cubby for her. And when I was building it, I was like, she's going to fit in this thing forever. It was four feet long and two feet wide. And I was like, she'll be in this till she's friggin' 10. And, uh, and now she's two and a half and she outgrew it. And so we ripped all that out and she has her own whole entire bedroom down here underneath. Down by her feet, she has all of her toys, books. It's really her own personal space back there and little lights that she can press by herself. And she loves it down there. And uh, up here on our bed, it's a full-size bed, and it works out good for us. We want it to really maximize our space, and a full is not really that big, but it's big enough for us. This ladder is really handy to get up. It just hangs on these ropes right here, and it comes down, leans right up, and creates a perfect little step stool to get up there. You gotta watch your head, though. <laughs> Now over here, we did a really cool piece out of pallet wood and some of our friends' old shower flooring, which was made out of teak. Um, they're just another schoolie, and uh, which is actually their name. Sorry, it's actually their name. And uh, we took more wood back here as a small, as like a headboard kind of thing, floating shelves for Erica to put her oils, journals, um, and she has her own workspace and all of her makeup and everything. So here is my side of the desk and we have our Wi-Fi router, which is truly unlimited data. A little bit of a workaround, but it works out really good. It's with AT&T and just put a SIM card right in the router and it practically works. And um, all my photography gear is stored in here and underneath my desk and drone and all this kind of fun stuff in the floating shelves. Working our way right here is our smart TV. Just a little 24 inch TV, but when it's right at the foot of your bed, it looks like it's a 54 inch screen. So that works out. And we use this extra space to put our bags and some other things and my fishing gear and stuff like that. Um, but that really, that concludes the bedroom area. We have a super long list of friends and family who have helped us along our journey of building this and, and living this way. And it's way too long to even express in this video, but all of our hearts and thanks goes out to those people who helped us truly. We, we, we really wouldn't be here if it wasn't for the help. Yeah. Just an abundance of unconditional help and love and support to get this going. Yeah. And speaking of people, since being on the road for two years, we have met some of the most incredible people. Um, we have for sure lifelong friends of just other people who live in buses or other people who live uh, mobily. And the people definitely make living life on the road worthwhile, truly. I mean, it's fun to see it's fun to see things and places, but to actually get to know people on a really intimate level is one of my favorite parts. And our, our daughter, she gets to play with more kids and experience more people than she ever would have just being in a normal house. Uh, I mean, we have friends who have four kids living in their bus down the Red Seed Road, and they all love to play with Shanti, and Shanti loves to play with them, and living and learning and just being outside 80% of the time. I mean, it's we feel blessed to be able to give that kind of life to our daughter and our future baby. Um, it's a really, it's a really cool thing, and I feel really proud that we made this a reality for ourselves and for our family. 
<laughs> All right, guys, welcome to the outside of our bus, which is one of our favorite aspects of the build. Um, to start off, we took the normal bus door that opened like accordion. It wasn't accordion style, but open from the middle. And we welded it together and made it one solid door. And then on the backside here, we fiberglass and bondoed everything. So it looks one piece and it is one piece. And this door handle was custom made from our friends at the wrong way home. Thank you, Rom. This handle has been amazing and it's a really cool touch to the bus. Now working our way back this way is we have six inch tongue and groove ship lap going down the side of our bus that we stained and sealed with polyurethane to make it super strong and resistant to the elements on the outside. And as you can tell, all of the bus windows are deleted. Jennifer, the previous owner that we told you about, she deleted all the windows and had these RV windows in, but it was just sheet metal. So we, we covered all that sheet metal up and did something cool with it. We also added this hook right here so we can hang a hammock or a drying rack or anything from the bus to a tree nearby. So now we're here at the back of the bus. One of the first things you notice before entering the garage space is we have our tow hitch that we welded and installed. Thank you, Dylan, for that help. And we flat tow this car right here, which is a 1996, the same year as the bus, Geo Tracker, four wheel drive manual. It's a really fun car and it's great to tow because it's so small, it hardly weighs anything. So come check out the garage now. So opening up into the garage space, here's our bed. So it's just the back side of the bed, but then we have a section in here that we keep our grill, which we cook on all the time. We also use it as a portable fireplace. And we have these bins back here that hold a bunch of stuff. My skateboard, Chanti scooter, shovel, all the kind of outside stuff. So now on the driver's side of the bus, we installed under storage. They're just truck toolboxes and they work out great. We have our generator, gas tanks, uh, diesel fuel for the diesel heater inside of this one. And this one houses all my tools and they're on there super strong to where I can even walk on them. We use these little benches out here and uh, it's really, handy to be able to keep all like the kind of junkier stuff outside. Right here was a skateboard of mine um, that I decided, I'm a big skateboarder, and I decided to just put this up on the side of the bus. I thought it fit the vibe really well. All the time we get told that this is like the surfer bus because um, we went with sand color and teal like the ocean and the wood makes it look like a woody kind of old woody Jeep. And uh, so I added this, it's, it's a skateboard, but it looks like a surfboard. and. Uh, it's a really cool touch. So if you want to see more of our travel videos, experience more of our story, we would love to see you guys over there at Their Happy Trails on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, but you know, <laughs> whatever. Like and subscribe to us if you feel so inclined. Bye. <laughs> See ya. Thanks for your time.